Hey everybody, it's your favourite terrorist of gaming again, Brandy Balls, back for another video. This time we're going to be doing PS4 versus Xbox One. May as well get straight on it. The looks. Well, I ain't got no PS4 to show off to you, so I'll just show you a photo of it right here. Damn, look at that slant. Well, overall I think it's a nice shape and size, and uh, I really like the added light, uh, blue light in the middle of it. Gives a good touch. Um, well, Microsoft have actually sent me an Xbox One this year, so let's take a look at it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. Well, this is it here. Your DVD drive and your compact disc drive and your USB, CD, SD port and all that there, you know. Wow, that really is something else, isn't it? The Specs. A lot of people have been saying that they don't believe what PlayStation and Microsoft have said about the specs. They don't think that that's the finalized specs. Shut up you idiots, because we all know that that is going to be the finalized specs. Xbox One is going to have its AMD 8-core APU, whereas PlayStation 4 is going to have a semi-custom 8-core AMD x86-64. Now, the capacity of storage for each of them is 500 gig to start off with. Obviously, they're going to get bigger, probably one terabyte or something. But Microsoft have been stupid again and not let their customers upgrade the storage themselves, whereas PlayStation still allow that. Xbox One is going to be offering an 8 gigabyte DDR3 with 3 gigabyte going towards its TV and apps and 5 gig going towards its games. Not so smart, I don't think anyway. While PS4 are going to be offering a unified 8GB DDR5, which is faster and easier to work with. Um, I think that Microsoft have dropped the ball on this one because they're a computer company and you would think a computer company would try to get the fastest and easiest and best RAM possible into their games console, but they went for the DDR3. Like a step down from the DDR5. Xbox, go home. You're drunk. And just a quick look at the price as well. Uh, Xbox One's going to be putting their price at £429 with the Kinect with it. Uh, PS4 is £349, £80 cheaper, but that there's without its camera. And that's all Xbox fanboys are like, oh, we got a camera, you don't, that's why it's so dear. Well, Whenever you buy the bundle pack with the camera, it's going to be £400, so we're still £30 cheaper, so haha. -ha. New features. I've been talking about two new features today, one good and one bad. The good one is that for both consoles, there is now an added game capture device in each of them. Um, and obviously we know that everybody in the gaming world loves putting their stupid and funny videos on YouTube from time to time, just like myself. Um, but PS4 is on top of this one as well, as they are allowing you to record 15 minutes of the footage you've just after been playing, whereas Xbox have just allowed 5 minutes. That's pretty stingy if you ask me, but that's the way they wanted to go about it. But the bad feature one that has brought up a lot of concern for Xbox One is the fact that Connect is mandatory. Yes, it says you can turn it off, but I'd say someday you'll be about to touch yourself inappropriately and you'll hear something like this. That's right. I've been a bad Xbox One. That would be pretty shocking, wouldn't it? Um, and Xbox have had so much critics about this but yet they're still going ahead with it and someday Xbox are probably going to have a website that has all your footage on it for their own sick mind games the games last but not least the games uh, everyone wants the games to be brilliant obviously some are going to be shit and some are going to be really really good but uh, we're going to take a look at some here, like, my favourite from E3, if I'm honest, was Watch Dogs. I thought Ubisoft stole the show with it. 
and it's on both consoles and I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, you play the role of protagonist Aiden Pierce. He's an extremely skillful hacker and he goes around stealing stuff and beating the crap out of people so what's not the love about that game. Ubisoft also had The Division which looks great. It looks like a really good open world shooter. A third person shooter where anyone can play with anyone basically on it and just go around killing people. And then Metal Gear Solid 5. I love the Metal Gear Solid franchise and now that they've, they've made it open world it's just going to be even better. It looks unbelievable and I can't wait to get my hands on it. In terms of exclusives to both consoles I thought that none of them, well not that none of them showed anything but none of them really showed anything really really new that we wanted to see. PS4 had its Killzone and Infamous franchise back up for another game and they look great. There was Halo on Xbox and Forza but I am not really into them too. Uh, the exclusives that stole the show for me for both consoles on the Xbox was Project Spark and I would love to have that on PlayStation because it looks like a great game. You can customize everything really creative and I feel that creativity in games is a great thing. Uh, and for PlayStation I'd have to say it was Knack that stole their show. Knack is really fresh, really new game about Knack. The what I don't know what he is, but he he can control like metal, ice, and all to his advantage in the game to fight against the bad guys in the game. So I thought that was a really new looking game, and it looks great. Both of Project Spark and Knack look like really good games. And that is the end of this video of PS4 versus Xbox One. Please like, subscribe, and check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, this has been your favorite terrorist of gaming, Brandy Balls. Thanks. See you all later. And Durka Durka.